I'm oral historian Mike Chappelle. Today, June 22nd, 2014, I'm interviewing Dr. George Bray for the Endocrine Society at its annual meeting being held this year at McCormick Place, Chicago. Yes, the Pennington Biomedical Research Center is a fascinating structure and institution. Um, it was made possible by a gift from uh, a, a wealthy oil man in Baton Rouge. Uh, and he'd been an oil wildcatter most of his life. And in 1970, he discovered oil finds that were worth about $100 million. Um, and in 1980, um, he discovered oil just north of Baton Rouge in a joint venture, I think, with Texaco that was worth a billion dollars. So he became the first billionaire in in Louisiana. And he let it be known that he was going to uh, give money away in order to avoid paying taxes on a billion dollars. That's a lot of taxes to pay on, on the royalties from it. So people were making pitches to him about what they would do with the money if they had it. And the president of the university went in. Uh, they began to have their chit chat uh, about what they were going to do. And, he, he noted, the president of the university, that there were a number of bottles along the windowsill. Um, and when he got a look at them, they were vitamin bottles. Vitamin C, vitamin B12, vitamin E. Um, and so when they sat down again, um, what, uh, what Dr. Copping, the president of the university, said to Mr. Pennington, he said, what LSU needs is a nutrition research center. Mr. Pennington stood up and put his right hand up. And see, he said, you got your $100 million. Now that would, that would make anybody's day if someone said you got your $100 million. When they finished the final settlements, it turned out to be about $125 million. And at that time, it was the largest single gift to an American university from a single individual. So LSU had $125 million in a special medical research fund that was a uh, biomedical research fund that was to operate this nutrition research center, which they didn't know what they were going to do with. So Dr. Copping, who had gotten the gift, worked with various faculty members uh, to design a building and that when the interest was big enough, they built a $26 million research facility with nearly a quarter million square feet of space using the interest on the $125 million. So there it sat in the fields of Louisiana on a 250-acre parcel of land. Uh, unoccupied for about two years and the, and the press was giving the university a hard time. What are you doing with this great big white elephant sitting out there empty? Uh, and that's sort of where I began to come into the story. Uh, about 1987 or 88, they were writing letters, I think it was late 87, to various people around the country asking if they would be interested in being the director of this nutrition research center. Um, and I was well enough known in nutrition and obesity areas that I got a letter. And I read it over and I, it, was, it seemed kind of interesting. So I went up to talk to my department chair at USC. And um, he said, well, he didn't usually recommend people look at jobs, uh, but he said this was an unusual one and I probably should look at it. He said, you know, you have 10,000 square foot research space in the lower floor of this research building. And there are four other floors above you, so three other floors above you, so it's 40,000 square feet in your wing. Uh, and in the next wing, there's another 40,000 square feet, so it's 80,000 square feet in this whole building, of which you have an eighth. And he said, they're offering you about three buildings that size in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And he says, you know, that's, that's, that's worth looking at. So I went down there in January 1988 um, and was picked up at the airport. And, met all the right people and over the next uh, few months we worked out an arrangement where I ended up going to Baton Rouge. I mean, my, uh, view come, my views of obesity treatment have been strongly influenced by my clinical trial experience. When I uh, was at the University of Southern California, most of my research work, except the intensive things on the clinical research center, uh, were uh, with basic science. Were, were studies of neurotransmitters, were studies of adrenalectomy and its effect on obesity, of vagotomy, and things that were quite 
specific and animal driven. When I came to Baton Rouge, um, we, we moved into a totally different arena. I switched from being a, a focused basic scientist around my animal models or relevant clinical models to a broader base. And my thinking about obesity and its approaches has been, has been tempered by that experience. Uh, the first of these was the Diabetes Prevention Program, a program that came along in 1994 as part of a whole series of programs at, at the <coughs> Pentagon Center to which we can return in a, in a moment. But um, in the Diabetes Prevention Program, the question we asked was, could you prevent or delay uh, the development of diabetes by taking people at high risk and putting them on <coughs> the best program you could find in the behavioral context. And we've done that and have examined the role of, a, of low fat, of calories, of, of exercise, and what this, these sets of studies, which are still ongoing, have shown is that the com lifestyle components are largely the reduction in calories, which is conditioned by how much fat you are reduced, that activity wasn't the major component of weight loss but clearly it plays an important control in maintaining lower weight. So that's, that's where my context for, for lifestyle approaches to obesity, which are by most people considered to be the foundation or cornerstone of most treatment programs. The diabetes prevention program uh, was again another request for applications for people who had plans about what they would do with a population of people who were at high risk for diabetes that has ha had impaired glucose tolerance uh, if they were included in the treatment program. So we were again selected uh, out of the hundred and some odd centers that applied with a group of, of 20 other sites. So we, we were again feeling that we had branded the Pennington Center as a, as a, as a respectable, uh, you know, highly respectable research entity in this context of, of clinical trials. Uh, so the, the Diabetes Prevention Program began planning its intervention in 1994, and we began enrolling people in 1996. It took us three years to reach the 3,700 enrollees in the initial phase of the trial. Um, so by 1999, we finished enrollment, uh, and the trial was so successful that our Data Safety Monitoring Board said we already had reached our endpoint before the trial time it actually ended. So in 2002, uh, we, terminated, we were asked to terminate the initial trial. We published the data and then began an interim trial where we offered all the people who hadn't had the intensive lifestyle arm the chance to have it while we retooled to go on to the diabetes prevention outcome study, which has been going on for the last 10 plus years. So we're now reaching our uh, 15, 20th year of this trial, and it is uh, under review for an additional five years.